What you guys got another PC build here for you, another cheap gaming PC for Fortnite, PUBG and all those types of games that you may want to play. Now is it viable to still build uh, PCs from used parts Is it or is it better to get new parts? Well it depends on your, what your budget is and what you can pick up the used parts for. This is going to be an i5 DDR3 uh, system which is still capable of playing modern day games. And you can see here we've got an Intel motherboard. It's not the prettiest motherboard to look at to be honest with you. But time we put a few LED lights inside the case and stuff, you won't even know the difference uh, when you're playing some games. Now obviously it's going to have its limitations, but if you're on a tight budget, uh, then this little setup will do just fine. So what we're going to do here is going to be putting in an i5 processor into here. And you can pick some of those up now, pretty cheap. And what I would say is before you start uh, spending vast amounts of money on second hand parts, make sure everything is working OK here. So I'm making sure all the pins on the board are OK because this is used parts. We want to make sure there's no damage to it. I will do a thorough uh, burning test on this system to make sure that it's functioning properly and there's no issues. There's always going to be issues with some used parts because some people are trying to sell off their junk. And as you can see here, uh, the marks on the boards are still on these older systems. It's very easy to set up and build uh, a modern day PC or even older PCs. So I've got an i5 processor here, which I picked up on eBay pretty cheap. So I'm just going to slot this in. You should see the little notches on the side here and that little triangle in the corner, which needs to uh, marry up to the mark on the motherboard here which is what i'm putting it into so let's just go ahead and slot that into position there and uh, give it a little jiggle make sure it's sitting in that little uh, socket there okay and then just pull the cover down and then what we're going to do is pull the lever down and sl slot that underneath and that's in position now it's pretty straightforward and easy to do there now we need to put on a heat sink here and uh, this heatsink here is a master cooler. I'm not going to be using this one, but if you do want a bit of RGB, you can use something like this. But if you want to try and keep the cost down, then this Chinese 95 watt high performance CPU cooler for £10 on eBay uh, will do the trick. And uh, as you'll see by the temperatures, I was pretty impressed with this little cooler at just £10. And I'm trying to keep the cost down because obviously I don't want it getting too high because then obviously it won't be worth building. So let's have a look here. We've got a, a nice LED fan on here. We've got copper piping on here. It's not the thickest copper piping, but it will do. And also we have another fan on the back here, which is your exhaust fan. So I'll be setting it just like so and draw air straight out to the case. And uh, that will be then getting rid of hot air from inside the case. The fins on the side are pretty thin, but what do you expect for a 10 pound note? It's not uh, too bad. So what it comes with is one of these little uh, mounting systems here and uh, read the uh, pamphlet if you're going to be buying one of these. Uh, don't do what I did and just try to work it out as you go along because it uh, it's a little bit confusing when you first look at these because I've never put one of these on before. But after having a little look at it, it's pretty straightforward. You just need to put the cover onto the motherboard and push the little plastic uh, clips into it and then slot those into the board which holds that into position and then to lock it into position you need to use uh, some other black little clips that push down and that will hold the bracket into position there so it is pretty straightforward but uh, as always I never read the instructions I'll try and work it out as I go along and it wasn't too difficult so just push those into the board itself and they need to go through the holes and then they will expand on the other side when I push the clips in so I'm just going to do that right now. And there we go. Now people always ask me how much is a, enough money to build one of these PCs? Well, it just depends on how cheap you can buy your parts for. So if you can get them as cheap as possible, then it's still a viable uh, project to do. But obviously if it's too much money, then you may want to buy new. Make sure you pull this plastic thing off the bottom of the heatsink. I've seen people forget to pull that off. And of course, it's a bit of a new bearer, but some people still make those mistakes. OK, so we need to put some compound on our CPU. And again, the choice is entirely up to you. There's a bunch of them out there now that everyone seems to be making compound nowadays. I found this on Amazon at a pretty reasonable price and you get quite a lot of it. I shall test the thermals on this to see if it's any good. If it's no good, I shall replace it with some good stuff. So uh, I'm going to give this a test and see what it looks like and how it performs. And uh, you only need a little bit on here. It's supposed to be equivalent to like Arctic Silver or something like that, which is good enough for what I need for this uh, build, really. 
So uh, I don't want to be spending a vast amount of money trying to keep the cost down on this build. And uh, that's probably enough on there. I just probably put a little touch too much. And that's probably because I ain't got my glasses on. But that's okay. Uh, it's not going to harm it. And uh, just you can either spread it out or leave it as a blob or put it as a line or whatever way you want to do it. I'm going to put these little black clips in. I should have probably put these in as well before I put the uh, compound on there. But it's no big deal. So just push these in. And uh, we can then put up the... Uh, heat sink and again the heat sink um, you can try these heat sinks out and see how they perform for you and uh, if they work well then it's a nice bargain if it doesn't I'll just swap it out and replace it it's that uh, it's that simple so I'm gonna put it the fan extractor facing towards the back of the computer that way when I put a, a, a fan onto the case it's going to extract all the heat out of the case which will keep inside the case a lot cooler I'll have air going in the front and extracting air out the back and that's the way I like to do it so that's pretty simple just put the catches around uh, the little plastic notches on the bracket there and uh, there we go she's sitting well on there and uh, I'm just testing that because it just looks it looks a really weird sort of fitting but it's just a it's just the plastic type fitment and uh, what do you expect for a tenor I suppose but we'll see what the temps are like on this one. And I need to now put the free pin connector into the CPU header on the board. And I'll do that right now. Now, again, people always ask me how much is enough money to pay for these types of builds. And to be honest with you, if I told you I paid, uh, you know, £10 for that board and £20 for the CPU, you may not find it for that price. So you just got to do your research and uh, hopefully buy them as cheap as possible now what I would say to you is make sure it's not too much money because you don't want to be spending more than what it would cost to build a new machine so you can see I've got the RAM here with these uh, sort of heat spreaders on them with some RGB on the top just to add a little bit of bling to it because I will be selling this machine so I just wanted to add a little bit of bling now you can see here there is a cable that goes up the top and I've made it that way so the cable will route it out the back of the case and if you add it around the other way you're going to end up with a bunch of cables at the bottom of your RAM which is going to be um, looking pretty nasty so I just wanted to do it that way so now we need to put in our IO shield and I'm just going to push this into a case now I did have this case lying around I wasn't using it and I thought I just might as well buy some parts and uh, try to utilize it and uh, give some someone else some use out of it it's in pretty good nick and uh, it saves throwing it away and uh, we are a pretty wasteful society today so I wanted to try to utilize some of this stuff now I need to put some uh, little risers in here there's a couple of them missing so I've got a few lying around and if you want to get some screws and some of these little uh, types of risers and stuff like that you can buy a big box of them on Amazon and they come with a mixed box of screws and if you're going to be doing this sort of stuff on a regular basis they are pretty useful so this one's a bit tight so I'm just going to tighten it down a little bit uh, sometimes they screw in and sometimes the hole is full of paint and you just need to tighten it down a little bit don't over tighten them and if you don't tighten them down properly what will happen is they start to spin once you put the screw in and you'll have big problems getting it out so let's get the uh, motherboard in there so I'm just going to offer this in and I don't think that looks too bad considering it's a pretty old system uh, nowadays so just going to push this into location and then all I need to do is tighten down the screws so if you are into gaming and you want to get into PC uh, gaming you don't have to spend vast amounts of money obviously a graphics card does help with uh, PC gaming so make sure you've got yourself a yeah, decent power supply i5 and uh, you know decent uh, graphics card and you should be okay so let's tighten these uh, screws down won't bore you with every single screw but I'm just gonna screw this last one down here now there's no screw on the middle of the motherboard that's just a little riser there that uh, the motherboard sits on so it doesn't have a screw on that one so let's get a, a fan on the back of the case here to extract some of that heat and this is gonna be an 140 mil LED red fan which I had lying around so I'm just gonna be using that one and utilizing it I've gone for the red theme here so I'm gonna have red uh, LED fans on the uh, CPU cooler, red LED on the extractor fan and some red accents on the case as well and again if you wanted to add a bit more 
bling to it you could add those magnetic led strips in there if you needed more red accents on there if you wanted to do that and you can even slide them under the motherboard a little bit and try to put them there and that will look quite nice as well so i've just pushed those cables through the top here these are for the ram and uh, this case does come with a fan header on it and if it doesn't have one of them you will need to get one of those and then generally you have to put a bit of power to it and that's pretty much about it goes for the uh, fan headers but they're very useful and they keep all the cables around the back of the case and that was my goal here so i just wanted to try new things here this is an old system and trying to make it look a bit more modern uh, with those rgb ram slots on there and I, I did get a bit of feedback from people saying i don't like it if you don't like rgb then don't do them it's i don't like rgb as much but i just wanted to try something different and try to add a bit of a bling to an old system and uh, that's what my goal was there so i'm just going to put on the connectors here and uh, the usb 3.0 and also the audio and uh, the usb 2 plug i shall put in there as well and that's what i'm going to do so i'm just going to plug those in pretty straightforward and easy to do you can see them here and if you don't know how to do these there is plenty of readouts on the internet and if you don't know how to find those you can just type in you know into google and it will show you a picture of how to put those on there if you needed to do that i've been doing this quite a while so i just know those off by art but i'm just going to give you an heads up of uh, basically how to find them now i'm just going to route the cables through here just to try and keep them as tidy as possible and uh, once i've got those through going to put it into the right sockets and you can see they're labeled on the motherboard as well so they've been pretty thoughtful there a lot of people uh, team seem to make a lot of issues out of cabling and stuff like that it's pretty straightforward once you've done one you'll sort of get the idea they're in the same sort of positions really so let's go ahead and plug those in now again once we've got this done all we need to do is a few other bits and pieces and we should be pretty good to go so i'm just going to stick in the hard drive here and uh, this is a 500 gig hard drive yes it's mechanical and uh, that's because i had it lying around and uh, if i wanted to i could put an ssd in there but the thing is i'm trying to keep the cost down and uh, it would make the system a hell of a lot faster but obviously i don't want to plummet too much money into this uh, system so i'm going to keep this one at minimum and uh, use that mechanical drive and it will still work fine it'll just be a little bit slower to boot up and also uh, to load those games up but once they're loaded it won't matter whatsoever so let's go ahead and uh, slot that into its position here and you've got to remember guys that this system is not bleeding edge it's just to show people that you can build cheap gaming systems if you're on a tight budget and I think people forget sometimes that not everyone has got the same amount of money as other people so that's the reason why I make these videos and try to show people that you can still do it at a cheap affordable prices so I'm just going to put in the SATA cable here and the power and then push those through so we can put those into the board and I just want to put that on the inside of that cable there so let me pull that back out and again you won't want to spend too much money on this system uh, if it depends on what your budget is but you've got to sort of remember if you're looking at Ryzen 3 and and stuff like that you can get those pretty cheap so you don't want to go too crazy now I'll leave all the cables on here because I will be getting rid of this P PC and I want someone to be able to upgrade the graphics card and other options available to them there's no good me putting a minimum amount of cables in here and leaving them short if they want to upgrade later on so that's the reason why I've put all the cables on there normally if it's for myself I would only put on what I need but because I'll be getting rid of it it just means I'll uh, give them that and I'll make sure that they know that that is the way it's been done and they can remove them if they wish now this comes with a, a little unique bracket system here where you just screw this onto the back of the PSU and then you also screw it down with thumb screws into the back of the case and uh, to be honest it's a bit of a faff really I don't think they needed to do that but it's something different I suppose and that's the reason why they do it but now we have to screw this to the case so there we go so I'm just going to push these in and screw them down and these are just thumb screws it does come with a case 
And there we are. And that's a 550 watt um, EVGA gold certified uh, power supply. So there's plenty of power there to run what I need to run. I'm just going to run the CPU cable round the back and come up the top here and plug this into the board. And uh, this is uh, got four pins on it. So there'll be a four pin to the motherboard, which is the CPU uh, power. There we go. And she's starting to come together a little bit now. So a bit of cable management to tidy up in there. You're not going to get rid of all the cables because of those RAM cables there. But it's, it looks okay as it is at the moment because obviously I was expecting it to look a lot worse with those cables. Just going to put the 24 pin into the 24 pin socket so we can uh, finish that part off. There we go. Try and keep the cables as tight as possible. And uh, move on down to the uh, SATA cable here. I've just plugged that into the board. And there we go. So all we need to do here now is uh, put a graphics card in. Now I've got an RX 560 here, which is brand new, which I managed to snag for a really cheap price on eBay. And I shall be putting that into the case. And uh, if someone wants to upgrade, they've got the power to do that. They've got the power cable there. All I need to do is swap that out and uh, they're good to go. But this will still play games at reasonable amounts. It's not going to give you super high frame rates. But I'll show you some benchmarks a little bit later in the video so you can see. So there she is. She's all finished. And I think it's not too bad. It does look okay. And remember, guys, there's a lot of channels out there that are pumping out brand new systems every single week. And uh, not everyone has got that sort of money to chuck around. So uh, that's the reason why I wanted to make some of these budget systems for you guys, just for people that are out there on a tight budget that want to try to play uh, games online and uh, don't want to spend a lot of money. And these sort of systems can do exactly that. As long as you don't buy too expensive uh, parts and you try to keep the cost down, you should still be able to get a decent system like this at a reasonable price and still play all those games, okay? And even people selling second-hand uh, cases and stuff like that, you can always pick those bits up and put them together and make a decent system. Just take your time, pick the parts, and have a set budget, and don't go above it, and you should be okay. That cooler was absolutely fabulous. For £10, it uh, went to 29 to 30 around that sort of temperature, and that was on idle. I did push it, and it was fine. It had no problems whatsoever, and that compound did a great job as well, so I'll be definitely using that again. Now, also, I've got some high settings here, play some Dirt Rally. I'll just show you here. You can see the specs up on the uh, side of the screen there, so you can see them, and uh, the GPU is running at 64 Celsius. Uh, again, it's pretty normal, and uh, again, uh, we've got the i5 running at 55%, 32 uh, sorry 42 celsius uh, for gaming that's not too bad and uh we're getting 110 115 frames you can see here 1080p uh 82 80 frames playing dirt rally very playable no problems whatsoever so if you are after a gaming system but don't want to spend the money on uh high-end parts then something like this is a great little system now, I just want to give you a glimpse of Tomb Raider. Now, Tomb Raider is quite a beefy game to play. And uh, I'm hoping that we get a nice gaming experience here. So you can see the settings uh, are set on the screen. You can uh, see what they are. And uh, we have got uh, some settings that are on high there. And uh, this is quite a graphical game to play. It's really difficult for some of the lower end systems. But we'll give it a go and see what it turns out like. And here we are, and we're getting 50 frames. So you'll go up and down 54, 55, and down to you know 43 and stuff like that. But generally, it was a very good experience. I had no problems with it at all. And uh, you can turn the settings down if you want. You can even come down to 720p if you want. This is 1080p. But if you needed to lower the settings, you can do, and it will still play all of those games if you wanted to at those settings. So it just depends on how far you uh, want to go and uh, what sort of uh, settings you want to run it at. So, and you can see the gameplay is very enjoyable. And uh, no problems at all there. You can see the GPU is at 71 Celsius, 70 Celsius, which is pretty normal uh, for Radeon sort of cards. And also we've got the i5 there running at 38 Celsius. Now PUBG as well, you can see the settings I've got set on PUBG here. 
and uh, we've got these on obviously you want to keep these down because obviously you want uh, better frame rates you can set these up how you like and uh, you can see we're getting 63 frames inside here uh, which is pretty playable when you're running around go down to 55 and then back up to 60 odd so that is definitely playable if you are on a super tight budget and you want to get a gaming system that will play all the latest AAA listed games now of course it will play games like Fortnite and if it can handle PUBG it will certainly handle uh, Fortnite and games like Witcher and stuff like that so it can play all those games if you want it to at pretty good frame rates anyway I'm going to wrap this one up I hope this has been helpful to you if you need any help with uh, PC parts and stuff like that then join the forums and post up over there and uh, I'll try and do my best to help you out anyway thanks again for watching guys my name is Brian from BrightTechComputers.co.uk I shall see you again in the next one bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the big red subscribe button on my youtube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos